So how many of you think that technology can solve all of our biggest social problems? A few hands, a few at the top. How many of you think that maybe technology isn't the answer, that we just need to improve our, our social systems to solve our problems, and maybe technology creates problems? Ah, more of you. <laughs> great, great. So I think that you're both right. Personally, I believe that we have the technology today that we could solve all the world's biggest social problems, food, water, shelter, energy, for everyone on the planet within 10 years. At the same time, these technologies are also so powerful that I believe they could also greatly harm our society. And that today, we need to come up with new ethical frameworks on how to use these technologies. And we need to redesign how our societies, our governments, our economic systems, our education systems work. I want to tell you more about why I believe that and in the process tell you a bit about my own journey as a social entrepreneur who started working with technology. This is my hometown. I'm from the countryside in California. Um, it's a very rural area, and as a child, I, um, I could see the stars, I could see nature around me, and I love science and I love technology. However, also being in a small community, I saw people's lives over 20 years. I saw the social problems that they faced, and I cared a great deal about people. I wanted to study physics, but then I switched to history, and I went to work in the nonprofit sector. When I was young, I went to places like Vietnam, where I worked in the education sector, and Myanmar, where I worked with orphans and also teaching. And I also spent about 10 years working with an organization called Ashoka, which is the world's largest organization of social entrepreneurs. But something that was interesting to me was that during those years, most people in this industry were very suspicious of technology. They didn't like technology. And this is because this is what technology was. Usually, you would have a very wealthy country wanting to help a, a low-income country, and they would bring in a well or other big infrastructure projects. They would drop it on a village with no input from the villagers. The infrastructure would break. Then uh, it would be very expensive, and no, no one would have running water or other things. But I had the sense that it, somewhere along the line that technology was changing, that this big expensive infrastructure wasn't what technology had to be. And in 2011, I heard of this place called the Singularity University. And it's a university based in the Silicon Valley that says, we want to use exponential technologies to solve the world's biggest problems, to impact the lives of a billion people in a positive way. So I went to this program, and I learned that technology had indeed changed. We live now in a world that is digital, and we're digitizing everything that we, we can, you know, from the internet to our DNA to how we manufacture goods. And digital technology is different than the old technology. It's cheap, it scales very, very, very fast, and you can iterate with it and work with it and Almost you know, anyone in the world, more and more, can take this technology and use it to solve their own problems. While we were there, I was on a team that created a company called the MatterNet, which was the world's first use of drones for transport. We came up with the idea we could use these cheap flying robots to deliver medicine in low-income countries where people might have to walk eight hours a day just to get a, a lab test or to, to get medicine. That company worked and it created a whole new drone transport industry that exists today. That was a very powerful experience for me because I learned the power of technology today and how it could dramatically solve our social problems. I met other incredible people too that were also using technology. There's a man named Mark Post from the Netherlands who has invented this hamburger. He takes a little bit of a cow he doesn't kill the cow, he takes a piece of the cow about this big and puts it in a bioreactor. And he grows meat. His, his first hamburger, that cost him about $200,000 to build. <laughs> Very expensive. 
but now it's only uh, about $10. And he has a lot of competition. People are, other people are working on uh, hamburgers, chicken, meat, poultry. At first you think, this, this sounds disgusting. Who would want to eat this, right? But then I thought, like, well, you don't kill animals with this. And think about all the damage to our environment that the livestock industry causes, the fishing industries. Eating meat is, causes huge problems to our world. And furthermore, you can make this meat uh, possibly healthier so it doesn't give you a heart attack someday, right? So I actually think I will eat that meat when it comes out, and I, I, could, I hope our whole world might do so also. I also met another team that was working on improving education in Myanmar through virtual reality. Myanmar is one of the poorest countries in the world and has one of the worst education systems. This team just went around and recorded classes and how teachers were teaching students in virtual reality. And within a few months, they had 128 schools in Myanmar signed up to train their teachers in 21st education. This did not cost a lot of money to do. This is the hope that we have for rapidly improving our education system globally. Another team, Iris AI, actually from Europe, they're building an artificial intelligence that can perform biomedical research. Maybe someday they'll save my life or your life. Again, I want to emphasize this technology, it's not expensive. It doesn't take that long to build. We live in this world now where anyone can start creating solutions for one another. But as I was working in this industry, I started to see there's also a dark side to technology. I took this photo of a self-driving car that's in my neighborhood in Mountain View. So I drive with these cars already. And I love them because they will, they will reduce traffic accidents, they will allow the elderly and the disabled to be mobile. But they and other robots and artificial intelligence are gonna cause possibly massive un unemployment. And because this technology is so, that falls so quickly in cost, I actually don't believe that our current economic system will be able to work in the future. Many of you know the internet, the promise of the internet. You know Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook stands for giving everyone a voice. I believe that too. I believe the, in the potential of everyone on this planet to have a voice to contribute to society. And I love the internet and social media for making that possible. I think about the ice bucket challenge where strangers through generosity, through play, raised $200 million to help cure a disease. That's what the internet has allowed us to do. But there's also a dark side. If everyone has access to the internet and can create their own websites and news sources, we now don't know which news is true or false. This has caused a crisis in my own country, and others might agree also in theirs. About two weeks ago, we had all of our scientists come out onto the street because they felt the scientific method was under attack. So these are very big fundamental changes that are happening right now. I told you the story about our drone company, and drones are saving lives, but in the last few months, ISIS has also been using drones to kill people. They put bombs on them and, and just send them at soldiers, and they put uh, grenades on them and drop them from above. So it's not really is the technology good or bad. The technology can save a life or it can kill a life. It's what do you intend to do with it? Liz Parrish, this is one of my, uh, my favorite, favorite people. She lives in Washington State in the US, and she realized that for years we'd been performing gene therapy to reduce aging in lab animals. But she knew she could never get this cleared in, through our regulatory system, so she created a startup. She didn't have a university, she didn't work for a big biomedical company, and she took the gene therapy on herself. She did this about two years ago, and she has not had any negative effects, and that there's biomarkers in her cells that are now 20 years younger. So this is, this is the world that we're living in. One person can create a startup to reverse aging. Or one person could create, um, use genetic engineering to perhaps create a virus that could harm all of us. Elon Musk, you know he started SpaceX. You know he started Tesla. 
He recently announced he's creating a neural lace that will they'll read your brain, and he'll, he's hooking it up to a computer. For decades, scientists have been working on this to help paralyzed people. You can read the, a person's brain waves, send it to a computer, hook it up to a, an exoskeleton, and then people can walk. This is happening right now. But just to be clear, this is also the beginning of merging our minds with machines, and it's the beginning of telepathy. When I think of all this, I, I, I think of that we are now entering a human revolution. We know we've been in a technological revolution, the internet era, the information age, computers, technology, we've, that's defined all of us, our generation. But that is now triggering this human revolution where I think these technologies are, are, are giving fundamental questions that we thought our great grandchildren might have to answer to us now. Do you want to live forever? Do you want to cook your brain up to someone else's mind? If a robot takes your job, what will you do? What will be your purpose? These questions are for our generation that we need to work out now. And so, you know, I started out asking if you thought technology could help us or if it might harm us. For those of you who are working in technology, please understand the huge social implications and ethics of this technology and use it for good. For those of you who are suspicious of technology, or may not work in it, I ask you to get involved. Like myself, I studied history and worked in the nonprofit sector. I, I started forming technology companies because I knew they could have an incredible social impact. So we need you also directing how these applications work. So I hope you will join me in this coming human revolution and make a world that works for everybody. Thank you. Thank you.